Hey guys, welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to be releasing my rig. So this is the rig I use for all my animations. Um, I mentioned this in my last behind the scenes. I also talked a little, a little bit about why, and I also talked about my second channel and the rigging stars and stuff like that. So if you are someone who subscribes to the second channel, I recommend you go ahead and watch that behind the scenes. I'll leave a timestamp link in the description that'll take you right to it if you're interested. Uh, but as far as this video goes, yeah, there's a link in the description where you can download it, and I'm just going to be showing you how to use it. For starters, this rig was created in Maya 2016, uh, so you're going to want to use that version or anything that comes out after this. Uh, if you're opening it up in an earlier version, like Maya 2015, you're going to get broken connections, errors, and the rig is not going to work all the way. So make sure you're using the latest version of Maya. Uh, let's go ahead. Oh, and the next thing I want to mention is uh, textures and stuff. This is something I got a lot of in the last the last time I released my earlier version of my rig. Um, people saying that, you know, the rig was just black when they opened it. Uh, you're going to need to reconnect any file paths. So all the textures that are plugged into the scene, uh, there are actually three here. Uh, there are items for the left and right hand, and then there's the skin texture. Just make sure you plug these into textures that are actually on your hard drive. All right, so let's start with these layers over here. So the first layer is the rigging layer. These are all things like uh, bones and deformers, things you don't want to see or accidentally select. So that's on this layer, and it's by default the visibility is set to off. Next one is the skin layer. These are all the objects that make up the character's skin. Uh, so this is reference, so what the R means, reference by default, so you can't actually select any of the mesh pieces for the skin. You can always select uh, the controllers. And you'll also notice it's the only one with the P. Uh, that rep represents visibility during playback. So the P being meaning enabled, and if the P is off, as you notice with all the other layers, it means you won't be able to see those during playback. So if I go ahead and reset the time here and hit play, you'll notice the control layer, since the P is disabled, the controls will all disappear, and you'll be left with just the skin. And that's just a little bit easier to see what's going on with your animation uh, when you're playing it. And then, as I mentioned, the last one is this control layer, and these are just simply all the controls. So uh, I'm assuming you've had some experience, maybe you've opened up a rig and just kind of messed around with it, because uh, this follows pretty much your standard layout. So it should be fairly intuitive. Uh, you've got the leg controls here. Um, these are simply IK controllers. And also I recommend being on object uh, transform or translate mode. That way the, uh, the controls for the legs are mirrored, so that way they'll move opposite of each other. I found personally when I'm animating, uh, it's easier like this. If you want them to move together as one, you can always switch to world mode, and now they'll move together. So, preference there. Personally, I prefer object mode for most of the time. Uh, we've got the root controller here. Uh, these two yellow controllers here on the torso are like the main controllers. So you've got the root controller here, and then this is kind of the main twist for the for the torso there, and then these light blue ones are just kind of tweak controllers, you can mess around with those. Uh, moving over to the arms, uh, <clears throat> we've got these two IK controllers, uh, it's an IK by default, and uh, if you want to switch those, you can go select these shoulder controllers here, and you can switch the IK influence to zero, and now you're in FK mode, and I can just use these two as an example. Uh, but personally, I stick to IK for 80% of the time. There are there are circumstances where uh, FK is more beneficial, but for the most part, I'm an IK. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that uh, these are also mirrored, and you'll notice the IK at least are tilted inward by default. Um, I just found that I would do this a lot of the times anyway in an animation. Like this would be the first thing I'd do is kind of tilt them inward, uh, and you get much more natural um, results from the IK arms. You'll notice as I move them around, you kind of just just the way it twists the elbow and stuff is a lot more a lot more natural. Uh, if you want to twist the elbow, obviously, you, there's a twist controller here, and you can use that to rotate the arms. And then the last thing is there's world parent. Uh, so by default, the arms will move with the rest of the body. They're parented. So if you grab anything uh, higher up in the hierarchy, the arms will move with them. And if you want them to stay in position in space, you can just set world parent to 1. And now they'll stay in position regardless how you move the rest of the body. Now, of course, if you overextend the arms, then they'll have to get pulled. But uh, as long as they're within their reach. Uh, going back to those shoulder controllers here, I mentioned there's, that's what that holds the IKFK switch. Just go ahead and reset these back to their default. Um, the shoulders here, this holds the IK and FK switch. Also, you can translate these. Uh, they're mirrored as well, so you can move these around if you want to chop the... I don't know, the character's arm off. Um, I also use these a lot. I'll, I like to move the character's arms inward a little bit, especially for going through like doorways or one block wide areas because the shoulder span's kind of wide and it can make it a little bit easier if you move them in some. 
Last thing are is, or last thing there's the wrists. These are pretty self-explanatory. You can use these to rotate the wrist. Uh, just like the arms, these have a world parent attribute. So if you set this to one, the rotation instead of following the arm will follow the the, uh, the world space basically. And then it also has this item visibility. So each hand has a item in it by default. So if I go ahead and set this to on, uh, you notice by default one side has a chicken and the other side has a pickaxe. These are just kind of placeholders. Um, these are little 16 by 16 grids of, uh, of voxels basically representing each pixel. So you can replace these with any texture you want. So if I go ahead and open up the uh, hyper shade here and I go to textures and if I replace the chicken with something else, maybe uh, here, how about a cookie? You'll notice it'll uh, automatically, you know, all those all the pixels that make up the cookie will automatically be extruded and the rest won't be actually visible. And um, you'll notice there's also this kind of weird viewport glitching. You don't have to worry about any of that happening in the actual render. Assuming you're using mental ray, uh, this will look fine in an actual uh, render here. Moving on up to the head now, this one's pretty self-explanatory again. You can use it to rotate the head, move the head, and then there's also the squash attribute so you can like just, I don't know, if the character's head gets squashed or something. Uh, for whatever you need that for. And that pretty much does it for the body. Let's go ahead and move on to the face. Now, the face has a camera here. If I go to Panels, Perspective, you'll notice the camera called Face Cam. So you can switch to this, and this is simply a camera parented to the face. Me personally, I usually do all my animating and then I animate the face. And it can be difficult trying to constantly reposition the perspective camera to always be facing the character if they're already animated. Uh, so to make that a little bit easier, you can switch to the Face Cam. And no, no matter how else, no matter how the rig's moving, uh, this camera will stay facing the face. Um, so generally I'll use that to animate the face, but for this I'm going to stay in perspective here so I can kind of tumble around easily. Over on the left side here we have everything related to the mouth, on the right side everything related to the eyes, and then up here are the eyebrow controllers. Uh, they also have these little bars here, you can use these to move, move those panels around. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the mouth. So this is just kind of your, your pretty much the main controller for the mouth here. You can move it up and down to open and close the mouth side to side to widen or narrow the mouth. Uh, there's a few extra attributes here. Uh, rotating it will uh, give you your M's and F's kind of so you can see the faces making those uh, those M's and F noises. Um, then you got left and right expressions, so smiling or frowning. And the manual override, uh, there's six joints that make up the mouth, and manual override basically just gives you control, individual control over each joint, so you can move these around if you want a very specific expression. I don't know, maybe kind of like a weird smile, grin thing. Actually, it kind of looks like a Nike sign. Um, but yeah, whatever you want to do, you can get direct control over each joint there. And this still works with all the rest of the expressions. It'll just kind of blend the two together so you can see I can like kind of mix in a smile with that. I can still open and close the mouth for like lip syncing. Uh, and then you can always just key this on and off if you want to switch between that expression throughout the animation. Uh, these two over here are just different ways of moving the whole mouth. So this first one here is called mouth push and the other one's called mouth offset. Um, and that kind of summarizes what they do. This one like pushes the mouth as if you kind of picture taking your hand or like a finger and kind of pushing your mouth one direction. That's basically what this kind of simulates. You can see the mouth kind of gets mushed from side to side. Uh, and then the one below it will just offset the whole mouth as a whole without deforming it at all. Um, you can also control the teeth through this one. So if I go ahead and just open the mouth, uh, the teeth will automatically just kind of stay at the edge of the mouth here. But if we go ahead and increase uh, bottom and top teeth together, you can use that to chomp, 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 or whatever. And of course, you can do one individually. Uh, over on the other side here, as I mentioned, the right side is all for the eyes. So you can use this to look around. Um, and then the rest of the eye controllers are all within this one controller. You can see all these extra attributes. Uh, so rotating it, you'll get pupil dilation. Scaling it, you can get cross-eyed or cockeyed. Uh, left and right blinking, obviously, for opening and closing. Left and right expression, you can get sad eyes or angry eyes. And then width, uh, I don't really know what this is for. I just kind of threw it in there. Um, it just makes the eyes look really weird. And then manual override works the same way with the mouth. You can control each joint individually if you want to. You can also rotate these. I don't think I showed that with the mouth, but you can also rotate those. Uh, so if, if you want a custom expression in the eyes, you can do that. Uh, and then the controller below it is for simply offsetting the eyes. Uh, if you want, if you need to do that, which I don't, I, oops, whoa, uh, which I haven't really ever used this controller. I don't think once in an actual animation, but it's there. Uh, and then up here, as I mentioned, we have the eyebrows. These work the same way as my previous rig. Um, I don't know. I really like this system because it's, 
it's an easy way of get it, being able to do any really any expression with the eyebrows um, without having too many controllers here. So basically, you have three points that represent that area of the eyebrow. You can use see this one op uh, moves the center around, this one moves the other side, and then same way for the other eyebrow. And you'll notice these are really jagged and sharp. Don't worry how that looks now. I'm going to show you how it actually renders, and it won't render looking like that. Uh, but that I'll get to that in a minute here. Uh, the last thing I want to go over is if you actually select the rig v4. You've got a bunch of different attributes here to, uh, to customize the face. So you can toggle pupils, uh, teeth, or eyebrows, teeth, uh, hat. There are two kinds of hats. Uh, I'll go over those at the end. Uh, world parent uh, will disconnect the, the control panel from the head. So now you can see if I turn that to one and I move the head, the whole control panel will stay in the same position. Uh, face. This is, this is a little confusing. This will use the, the character's face or the skin the skin's face and just get rid of all of the mesh for the basically for the face. Whoops. I'll just basically show you how it works. So no, so just get rid of all the eyes and the mouth and you'll just have it, that's if you want to use just the skin's face. For example, Enfen or uh, the, the pink Power Ranger, which shows up in a lot of animations. He doesn't have a face, so I'll just use I'll enable face, which is referring to the skin's face. Uh, lattice here will uh, make a lattice visible. You can mess around with this to just deform the head if you need to for whatever reason. Oops, I have smooth select on. There we go. Uh, so you can use that. For, uh, I use this a lot for villagers. You can, you know, just grab these top ones and extend the head some. Uh, basically, whatever you want to, however you want to deform the head, you can use that. Uh, and let's go ahead now. As I mentioned, the hat. So the first type of hat will show up uh, just how it shows up in game. So let me go ahead. And uh, we'll turn that on. This character actually doesn't have a hat. So let me go ahead and open up the Hypershade and plug in a skin that actually has a hat. So we'll just use Captain Sparkles, for example. He's got the glasses there. Uh, whoops. Open. Uh, so this is how it shows up in game. Um, now, obviously, the Captain Sparkles' actual skin, his eyes are higher up. So this would look normal in that case. But you'll notice it'll show up just how it does in game. You've got just kind of a plane that's raised off the face a little bit. Um, the extruded hat, kind of how the name implies, you'll get each pixel, same way the items in the hands work, where it'll extrude each pixel. Uh, you've got these kind of voxels here that represent each pixel on the hat, and it'll just extrude those for you. So, depending on which look you're going for, you can use, uh, you can use either uh, or the other. Alright, so that does it for controlling the character. Now I want to go over uh, materials and rendering it, and I've kind of positioned the character uh, so you can see this a little bit better, which I'll get to in a minute. Let's start with the materials first, though. So uh, we've got a couple here. First one is the eye slash teeth blend. This is the background of the eyes slash the teeth, obviously. It's a slightly reflective, uh, slightly specular, just solid white, basically. And obviously, if you want like a zombie or something, which have the black eyes, uh, you could just change the color and uh, you're good to go. Next one is the eye blend. So this is the pupil itself. If your character has blue eyes or red eyes, whatever, you can change this accordingly. Um, Lambert's for the left and right uh, items in the hands. So obviously this is the chicken one. This is the, uh, the pickaxe one. And mouth, so this mouth Lambert is just a matte black for the back of the mouth. Uh, and then there are two skin materials. So the first one is a is a Lambert, and this is for the hats. The second one is an MIAX, and this is for the rest of the body. Um, the reason I use the Lambert for just the hats is because a Lambert actually renders alpha channel in the viewport, whereas the MIAX doesn't. So it would just show up. Um, it would just show up matte. Basically, the hats would just cover everything. It would cover the face and everything, which wouldn't be very convenient to animate with. So that's why the hats are a Lambert. The rest is this MIAX, which is just a little bit more of an advanced material, has some extra features. Uh, the ambient inclusion built in and, and is enabled, uh, along with some more advanced uh, reflection attributes. And there is some specularity on this character. You notice if I tumble around here, you can see the, the highlights and it looks kind of plasticky. This is just the viewport's best representation. Um, when it comes render time, it'll be a lot more subtle, a lot softer. Um, it won't look this plasticky. And then the next thing is the, as I mentioned before, the eyebrows and with the as it, same goes with the rest of the body. This is just a low poly version. Um, when it comes render time, it's going to smooth this out. So if I go ahead, you can see the, the elbow here. It looks like a razor edge. Um, the torso, you can clearly see each subdivision here. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier with the eyebrows, it's clearly just one subdivision in the center. But if I go ahead and render this, uh, try and get an angle that shows everything. And give this a moment. You can see the elbow is still sharp, but obviously it's not um, its not a razor. It's nice and smooth. Uh, the torso, you can see, is one nice bend. And the eyebrow is a nice arc. So you can see, um, 
the viewport isn't 100% accurate to how it looks. It's a low poly version, which the benefit of this, of course, is being able to use a bunch of characters in the scene all animated and it's still playing back smoothly. Whereas if you had, you know, high, high density meshes all over the place, it would play back, it would chug basically. So this is a lot easier to animate with and then come render time where it matters, it'll smooth it out. All right, and that pretty much does it. Uh, as I mentioned, the link is in the description for the download. If you have any questions or any other thoughts about this, go ahead and leave a comment about it. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching.